So it's that time of year here again, a final review of Black Ops Cold War up on deck. This is probably also going to serve as our last Black Ops Cold War video here on the channel, which might not be too out of the ordinary since we haven't really done too many this year, and we'll talk about why in the video. But that said, today I want to break down some of the negatives, some of the positives, and everything in between here with Black Ops Cold War. I want to give you my review on this past year, how I've felt, and where I think this COD lands. So that said, as we go along, let me know your thoughts down below. What do you guys think of this game? What's your review of Black Black Ops Cold War, and how would you rate it? Feel free to let me know your thoughts down below, but if you enjoyed the video, make sure you drop a like down below, and of course, if you are new to the channel and want to stay with all things Vanguard, all things Warzone, and the coming integration afterwards, we're getting into launch week, so things are about to get crazy, and there is so much stuff you do not want to miss, so if you're interested in any of that, hit the subscribe button. With nearly 60% of viewers not subscribed, I'd love to have you in the community as we go forward into a new year. But said, let's jump into the review of Black Ops Cold War. So, I'm going to be honest, man, there's a lot to say about this game here this year, and and I'll be totally honest with you up front, Blunt. It wasn't my real cup of tea this year. I'm sure you've probably seen that evidenced by, well, the lack of Black Ops Cold War videos on the channel here this past year. So in this video, I want to start out with some stuff that's critiqued, some things that I didn't quite enjoy about the games and things that, just being brutally honest with it, I thought brought down the gameplay experience. But also, I mean, it's not all negative. It wasn't my favorite Call of Duty by far. But at the same time, I absolutely recognize where there's some things that credit should be given. So we're going to talk about that a little later on here, talk about some of the positives as well, but hopefully this can cover all the bases. I know that I'm probably going to look back here once this is published and be like, ah, I missed that. That was something that I don't know how I did, but I did. But as we go along, feel free to let me know your thoughts down below as well, what your thoughts are on. If I hit any nail on the head, if I missed something entirely, feel free to let me know your thoughts on the game and also what you feel on some of the points we make here in this video. Let's start out with some of the big ones here. One of the things that really kind of irked me from the very get-go of the game in Black Ops Cold War was what we saw in the beta. And actually, sorry, scratch that. We actually saw this at the pre-reveal capture event for Black Ops Cold War before it was actually even ever showed off to the world. The score streak system from the very get-go was something that I thought was fundamentally flawed. It was something that literally dropped the streak part of a score streak system. The only emphasis on going on a streak was that you'd get a bigger bonus in terms of that score that went along toward your streaks. But really, it was kind of a requisitions built in here with this. That to me was one of the most frustrating things right off the rip. I mean, the game would actively work against you if you were doing well. You could be on a 20 kill streak, but you couldn't wrap for another harp just yet because you had another thing that was incredibly irritating, a cooldown, which ruined even those better streaks that you could go on. The game would actively kind of punish you if you were going off, but at the same time reward you if you weren't really stringing anything together, you were just staying in the match. I forget when exactly I said this, but it was something that rang true for a while before I kind of stopped playing Cold War as much, but when I played Domination, I could basically pinpoint a single time frame, about a window of one to two minutes of every single Domination match where I know, okay, if I'm on a streak, it's gonna end because somebody's getting a helicopter, somebody's getting a harp, somebody's getting something that was kind of just given to them because they've been playing, didn't put together more than two, three streaks, but they got that for whatever reason. That was one of the first things that really irritated me here, and it was something that was apparent before the game even launched. Going, though, chronologically up to, well, launch, we didn't have a whole ton of stuff here with it. I will say that the campaign was phenomenal. I love that. I actually probably put just as much time into campaign this year as I did to MP and Zombies. If you guys remember, actually, back by the launch of Black Ops Cold War, we put up a video talking about every single Dark Ops challenge, and that was a video that I had a ton of fun doing, but in order to actually craft that and to show off how exactly to do the campaign specific challenges well i actually had to go and do them so that required me to play the campaign four five maybe six times granted a lot of that was actually just replayable at the end of the campaign so you really only had to do the base campaign about two maybe three times max but still it was a lot of time put in the campaign i love that but in terms of multiplayer content we only shipped with what, like eight maps or something like that, which was the lowest offering that I think we may have ever seen within a Call of Duty. And that was, that was really disappointing, if I'm honest with you. I'll be entirely blunt with you. I didn't play a lot of Black Ops Cold War this year. This was probably the least played Call of Duty that I had on my plate since Infinite Warfare, maybe Ghosts. I think that I have like three and a half days of playtime or something like that in MP, three and a half or so in Zombies, but all of that was basically just camo grinding. But one of the big reasons that I had that fatigue, I didn't really have the interest in coming back here, was because from the very get-go, it didn't 
really feel like something that was meant to keep me around. Again, with such minimal offering at the very beginning, granted, it absolutely did get way better as time went on. I think that I liked a lot of the DLC maps introduced, though I will say that we had nine copy and paste maps within the life cycle of Black Ops Cold War. Kind of wish that we had a little less and a couple of more original ones, but it was something that at the very beginning, it just didn't do a great job at captivating me in the multiplayer fashion. If there are more maps, I do think that that would have held my attention at least a little bit longer. And that's why for Vanguard in particular, I'm actually really excited that we see 16 maps for 6v6 and upwards in those higher counts of Blitz. Weaponry, I don't really know why, man, but snipers, I just didn't like in this game. Normally, I don't really care too much. It's an incredibly precise craft. It absolutely does have a level of skill that if you're good at it, you should absolutely be rewarded for that precision, that accuracy. But I don't know if it was a flinch thing or what, but good Lord, man, I felt like I was getting nuked anytime I went up against a sniper this year. I really don't know what it was. And one thing that I had a problem with personally here is that I found that there was very little variance in the gameplay whenever I played. Now, we're going to talk about it in a second, but I think this is due in part to the skill-based, or rather, more accurately, retention-based matchmaking that's in play whenever you go into matchmaking, because you literally can't use off-meta weapons. Now, I'm not trying to sound arrogant, I promise that, I'm not trying to toot my own horn here with this, but when you've played Call of Duty so much like I have for over a decade at a high level, it's gonna be one of those things where your account's in the top skill brackets. Now, I'm not joking, I gave up entirely on DM Ultra because I'd go dozens of games, no exaggeration, trying to do launcher challenges, pistols, something that is a complete disadvantage, and I'm just tanking my recent games, and sure enough, I still would get matched up against CDL skin, bunny hopping, 74 using slide canceling and pre-aiming sweaties who definitely use code espresso on G Fuel to make them that good every single game. In Modern Warfare the year before, I knew that whenever I was going for these camo challenges, I'd probably have to suffer like three, maybe four games, but literally when I was up into the double digits, I'd still be getting this when I'm going up with like a melee or something like that, where I'm just like, I'm never gonna win these gunfights. So that was something that really kind of jaded me as well for quite a bit of time. On a positive note though, I will say that I did like a lot of the gunplay here with Black Ops Cold War. While I still prefer Modern Warfare and that more so realistic engine with it, it was something that if you're looking for an arcade shooter, the gunplay was actually solid, I thought, when it came down to the arcade of Black Ops Cold War. Going further on into the year here, the seasonal content, honestly, I actually really liked the storyline here at this. One of my big takeaways from Cold War might be that I liked the stories the most out of anything else here at this, but the storylines I thought was really cool to see how things progressed from the campaign, then I think it's what, like four years later after the campaign, then this next Perseus thing with Adler, Stitch, and all that goes down throughout the seasons, and that was a cool little thing to follow around. Honestly, I thought a lot of the DLC maps also were solid, but also there really wasn't a ton of originality to a lot of them. Like we mentioned, nine copy and paste maps from Black Ops Cold War from previous games. But for some of those original maps, things like your Apocalypse, your Collateral, even recently, I didn't mind too much of Deprogram, though Deprogram's actual flow is a little bit out there, but the actual art of it is such a cool concept, man. Like that was a really awesome design. I'd personally change up some of the routes, some of the cover, and of course where you red door teleport to. But anyways, some of the maps were pretty cool actually. Probably the biggest single thing that I had an issue with with Black Ops Cold War though was the continuation of the retention-based and engagement-based matchmaking. And this is going to sound like a broken record. That's usually what we talk about when I bring up Black Ops Cold War, but truth be told, it really was one of the biggest hindrances for me having a good time, a fun time within Black Ops Cold War a lot of the times that I played. And now listen, I know that one of the first things that somebody's going to comment is like, oh, you just want to crush noobs. You just want to pub stomp. And while that is really fun whenever you can do that, that's not what it's all about, really, man. Like, whenever I think about skill-based and retention-based matchmaking, it is an incredibly manipulative form of matchmaking that, in particular with Call of Duty, tries to predict your exact highs and lows of dopamine to the point where when you're just about to get off, that's when it messes with you and you're like, Here's a good lobby. That part even aside though, it just comes down to very boring gameplay at that point, where not only one, can you just not take any matches off and you gotta sweat just to not necessarily even go positive, but if you're playing solo, dude, it is a nightmare. Like it is so bad if you're a solo player to the point where my favorite memories, whenever I recount them, they really all came when I was playing in a four or five, six man party. Playing solo was more often than not a struggle. But one of the big things that really, when I come down to it is that Again, it didn't allow me to really have any variance here. If I wanted to do well, I'd have to use a certain set of weapons because the players I was going up against 
are all using those weapons, which are statistically better. So I don't know if this year was much more strict than the year before, or if it was like collective burnout from doing two years back to back of skill based and retention based matchmaking to which if that's the case, that makes me scared for the year ahead in Vanguard, because let's be real, that's not going anywhere. It's going to stay around because it's proven to work for Call of Duty. It's helped their retention in their bottom line, which sucks to consider that we kind of have to suffer as a result. But I don't know if it was a collective burnout burnout between two years of it or this year was actually just much worse but it was something that really didn't make me want to go back and play multiplayer all that much i could probably play a couple of matches here and there and realistically when i look back at saved gameplay it's really only at larger seasonal launches that i ended up going back and playing cold war like a season launch season six if season six reloaded were to come out that would be some time when i jump on probably to grab some footage but that's where I was kind of at here with this. Ultimately, though, I think when you take a look at Black Ops Cold War as a whole also, though, I think that it's just unfortunate that it also followed Modern Warfare. I mean, love it or hate it, Modern Warfare redefined Call of Duty with this generation and put Call of Duty back on the map once again. Now, however much you want to attribute that to Warzone, that is entirely up to you. I mean, it's objective fact that Call of Duty Modern Warfare sold tremendously well upwards into, I think, the top five before Warzone even became a thing. And then whenever Warzone catapulted that up, it was by and far the most sold Call of Duty game. But when you have a game like that, and then something so drastically different in terms of Fundamental design, arcade style, different score streak system, entirely different era, weapon play and gun play is entirely different. It's going to feel very different. And when you come down to some of those things like gun play, like art design, I don't think that it should be any debate that Modern Warfare was incredible for those couple of things. Black Ops Cold War kind of just got the infinite warfare treatment where you had a great game beforehand and then it had to follow in those big footsteps. So it was a tall task from the very beginning that I certainly do not envy from the the perspective of a developer like i feel for that 100 percent now i will say that a lot of this came down to sort of negative talk and i do apologize i'm not really a negative person but this year wasn't my favorite i'm sure that you could probably tell by some of the videos on the channel already but i'll be honest with you man not all of black ops cold war is negative i really did like a lot of things here with this again the storyline seasonally i love that i love following adler i love following stitch i love that we had this black ops story that wasn't there before but they took that really tall task that really hard process of trying trying to not change canon, not mess with anything, but also make a story that fits and is worthy of being in that Black Ops lore. I thought they did a pretty solid job here at that with the tools that they had at their disposal. They did some fundamental things that really from the year before were a departure. I mean, we had the reintroduction of Ninja as a perk with semi-dead silence. That was absolutely something that the year before a lot of players we're not really too happy with it. it was just the field upgrade we had a return to a basic mini map where we had gunfire actually show up on that that was again another huge thing that was a great adjustment back to default call of duty unfortunately we got a year ahead where unless you're using a perk it doesn't show up again so kind of another departure which is a bummer but this also was the first year for other cool things like fov on console that was awesome when they announced that man like that was actually so great as a pc player i don't really think twice about it because it's there it's been there but as somebody that also came from the console scene it's great that that's now finally being equalized that that actual gameplay advantage is now no longer given to just one specific platform that is phenomenal to me time to kill i really liked black ops cold wars time to kill it gave you time to react here and that's something that i think is usually able to be said about Treyarch games the time to kill is generally much slower than that of modern warfare and other infinity ward titles of the past and that's something that i like again it gives that outplay feature that you can still turn on a dime and take somebody out even if they get first shot on you i kind of wish that vanguard's ttk was a little bit of a hybrid here between modern warfare and black ops cold war now looking ahead to the next year but i don't know if we'll see that happen but i really enjoyed the ttk here within black ops cold war I really enjoyed the return to form with regular challenges that you could grind out. Last year's system in Modern Warfare was only the officer challenges. I didn't like that. It really didn't give you a whole lot to do, especially if you completed everything. Whereas this year you had a lot to do between multiplayer campaign and zombies. So you really could go for 100%er essentially with all of that. 
The gunfight tournaments, that was really cool how they introduced it this year. Last year, it was kind of a one and done. If you didn't get that gunfight tournament reward, well, you didn't get any of them. But this year, you could still go back and get the very first one. Like myself, I haven't done any of the gunfight tournaments, even though I'm saying that I like them. I really like the process, though, and how they implement them, because I can still go back and do them whenever there's a gunfight tournament. So that's awesome. The seasonal prestige system, while it might not be everybody's cup of tea, it is something that I definitely give them props to because the seasonal system I don't think is going away. As we've talked about, the prestige system at its base beforehand was one of those things like, if it's not broke, don't fix it. But when they changed it within Modern Warfare, the entire goal was to create longer player retention. And I understand that. I don't necessarily agree that that was the best way to do it, but it's done. And so therefore they were doubling down on keeping players coming back every single season, but at least with Black Ops, Cold War is kind of a compromise. You had that refresh of your rank every single season, but you also had the ability to rank up past just 100 levels like we saw with Modern Warfare. If you hit 155 in Modern Warfare, you were done. You didn't have any reason to come back and keep playing. But with Black Ops Cold War, you did have the ability to go up to level 1000 every single season, which is a hell of a grind. So definitely like that they at least made it somewhat worthwhile to come back and keep playing, though I wish that there would have been more rewards. But talking about rewards, I do quite like, again, the introduction of the Prestige Shop. You had a ton of legacy items in terms of calling cards, custom prestige icons, blueprints that were introduced later on in the year, and that was something that was awesome. I mean, you get a Prestige Key every 50 levels, so you can end up getting some some really cool things throughout COD history and some exclusives, again, through that sort of prestige shop in the blueprint system there. So honestly, there were some really cool things that I think that they did within Black Ops Cold War. And while it wasn't my cup of tea, I totally understand why there were people that absolutely loved this year. It just, for me, was something that more so felt tedious. And as somebody that doesn't really quite understand of the sort of putting yourself through the pain if you don't like it, I just kind of stepped away. And so for those that really like the multiplayer content here on the channel in the past, I do apologize that there really wasn't much here this year. It just was one of those things that I wasn't enjoying it and I didn't want to have to fake it for you guys because I think that that absolutely would have shown in the product. So hopefully you guys can understand. Hopefully that's something that makes sense. And that's kind of my final review here on Black Ops Cold War. Oh wait, zombies is actually something we didn't even touch on. That's gonna be something that would have to take way too long to discuss everything. I love Dark Ether, love the zombies grind, really like what they did in terms of trying to add in brand new things like Outbreak. The round-based maps were pretty fun and I really, really liked that they made zombies accessible to everybody. It might have dumbed it down for a lot of the hardcore zombies players like myself, I definitely didn't need those indicators on where you have to go to turn on the power and activate Pack-a-Punch every single round, but it was one of those things that for the player that to bring the casual in, that helps out greatly. It makes zombies way more accessible. It doesn't put it behind 10 years of lore and Easter egg progression and stuff like that that you have to know an entire compendium of information just to jump into a basic survival map. So that's something that I really liked as well. But anyways, that's where I'm at here with this. That's my review of Black Ops Cold War. If I were to give it something, on the year. I think that there were a lot of things that really shined pretty bright, but a lot of things that also just took away from my enjoyment. So maybe like six out of 10. I don't know. I'm terrible at out of 10 rankings. I never know what feels accurate, what doesn't. But anyways, that's where I'm going to wrap it up. It's been a long video. So if you made it this far, thank you so much for the support. Truly appreciate it. But hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know your thoughts down below on Black Ops Cold War. How did you guys feel about this game this year? Let me know down below. But if you enjoyed the video, make sure you drop a like down below. And of course, if you are new to the channel, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss a single thing running all things Warzone, Vanguard. We have a lot of stuff coming up, man. It's just about to be launch week, so stick it here on the channel if you guys are interested in any of that. But said, if you also want to follow me over on Twitter and Instagram, those are the best places to chat with me outside of YouTube, so if you guys want to strike up a conversation, ask me a question, whatever the case may be, that link is down there in the description below. But said, thanks so much for watching. My name is Espresso. I'll see you guys later. Take care, and peace.